Hello everybody, welcome back to G-Bears Off-Grid Ways, a homestead in the desert, and here we are on the 14th of December 2019. And yeah, the weather went south on us again. Been windy all day, windy all last night, and now they got clouds moving in. And what the clouds are doing here, only the clouds know for sure. All right, so I was asked to show um what my kt5 wind turbine or pma is putting out in the wind okay so here we're looking at uh there's the uh, wattage it's putting out right now in the wind as the winds are fluctuating and the winds are running um 10 11 miles an hour right now on norm and gusting up to 20. so when you see this thing kick up it's uh, it's up near the 20 uh, mark, and then as it goes down, so forth and so on. Okay, so you see the amps that it's putting out right there, and the volts it's putting out right there. And then this is watts peak, amp hours, uh, volts max, watt hours, amps peak. Okay, and that's watts peak. So the total watts peak would be the WP right there, 1,018, is what I got in about... 60 mile an hour winds okay so the um the kt5 is a 1685 watt output but again i remind you um some for the newcomers and reminding some of the people that have been following me for a long time that when you when you're looking at a pma or a pmg and the ratings that they give you on that the numbers they give you on that are actually the maximum output and when it has a um the limited speed on it and good or they'll say actually good to speeds of 90 miles per hour or good to speeds to 55 miles per hour okay that max speed means that the design of the um the wings on that uh, that fan blade will only go a certain speed no matter how fast the wind is now you can have winds of 90 miles per hour but if the blades are only designed to handle um 50 mile an hour winds then that at anything over 50 miles an hour is called a stall uh, your, your blades can't go any any faster than that 50 miles an hour so the 90 miles an hour doesn't matter you, you're losing 40 miles an hour with the wind speed because it can't go that fast all right i hope that that explains that to you so anyway um the ratings that they do are kind of misleading and a lot of people buy a, a wind turbine and think wow that's a 1685 watts that's a 1.6 kilowatts that's half of what my bat my, my uh solar panels are Wow, that's great. I'll have a lot of extra electricity. You know, you'll, you're probably never going to see that because that KT5 is rated for 90 miles per hour. And if you've got 90 mile an hour winds out there that are producing 1,685 watts on your turbine or your PMA, if you will, um, you've got more problems than you might think. Because I don't think you, that thing is going to be up there when you go outside. It's going to be blown down or... The blades are going to shred or something like that. It's good to the 90 miles an hour, but that's a hurricane. Now, come on. Who cares about generating electricity during a hurricane? You know? So it's misleading the way they do that, but that's what it is. So as you can see right now, uh, with the wind speeds, we're in, in the 100 um, watt range. So that's only equal to one of my solar panels out there. It really doesn't... Um, it, it, it doesn't create enough electricity to um, replace the normal 375 watts I need just to run refrigerators and lighting and my stove and my microwaves and all that stuff. So I, I, I need about uh, just about 400 watts would, would give me enough to run all the stuff that's in, running in the cabin at a regular basis. And also give me a little extra to keep the batteries charged. So the batteries drop down. Right now, they're at 12.3. And haven't had sun here for a while because the clouds came in and blocked the sun off. 
So today was not a good sun generating day um, because the clouds kept getting in front of the sun. All right, so I'm gonna step around here. Now, that person wanted me to show the, the speed of the turbine turning, but I can only record it at 60 frames per second. So it kind of looks like it's going slower. And where I'm standing here, you can't even see the blades. The blades are actually um, invisible right now because it's turning so quickly. But in the video, it just looks like it's turning slow, okay? So that's that's the best I can do for you on that. Okay, now when it, it stops and reverses, that means that the, uh, the RPMs up there are double the 60 frames per second. <coughs> so it looks like it's going in reverse. All right, so we're gonna head inside because Andy has a little item that he's looking to sell that came from the solar he's got up on his motorhome. He's got 400 watts of solar panels on top of there. And he went with the lithium batteries and inside and um, charge controllers. But he wanted a charge controller with uh, Bluetooth so he could uh, monitor it without having to go out to the motorhome every now and then to see what was going on. So in the meantime, uh, the one that he had wouldn't do that, so he had to upgrade to a new one. And he has this older one that's not really old. It's only about a month old, only used for about a month. And uh, it's still in a box and all of that, and he's going to sell it. So I'm going to turn you over to Andy's voice here, and he's going to tell you about his uh, Rover, Renogy Rover, uh, MPPT controller. All right, Andy, it's on yours. <laughs> Hello, everybody. This is a near new, only used, like Bear said, uh, 40 amp MPP charge controller. It'll work on 12 or 24 volt. And like he said, I'm uh, lazy. I wanted to be able to check on my solar system using the Bluetooth on my telephone. And this one wasn't compatible with that. This is a 2019 model. Early 2019, they, uh, they were able to go on a on a program from Renogy and you can uh, adjust the parameters on your laptop now I can do it on Bluetooth uh, they're selling these for $169 on Renogy's site I looked at it today and uh, I want to sell this for just $110 uh, we'll negotiate uh, shipping or insurance depending on uh, where you are if you're interested and uh, I think it's a really good deal. Uh, it's near new. It works flawlessly. And as you can see, brand new in the box with all the booklets and all the cables. All right. So, if anybody out there uh, in viewer land or in YouTube land or even outside of YouTube land, out on YouTube Island, uh, is interested in this MPPT controller, then contact me um, at G Bear Homesteading. That's letter G B E A R H O M E S T E A D I N G. G Bear Homesteading at yahoo.com. All right, and uh, just email me with your information that you're interested in this. And then I'll send that, I'll forward that to Andy's email and put you in charge with him and, or, or in touch with him and uh, then you can work out the deal on this thing. All right, so that's about it. Um, the, we, these winds are supposed to be really bad as of tonight. Uh, they're going to get worse and they're not going to end until 10 a.m. sometime tomorrow. Here's some more features of the item. You could pause the video and read through this. Yep. And uh, there's the Rover 40 amp MPPT charge controller, and there's all of the uh, stuff. It's got four stage, four stage charging with MPTP output, uh, peak conversion efficiency 98%. This is really a good controller, and uh, I would buy it, but I need a refrigerator, not a charge controller. The ones I have are working. All right, so. Um, Andy also was sat on his uh, computer today and he found 
a um, refrigerator that'll work for me, right size and everything, at Lowe's, and a pretty decent price, too. So uh, I'm probably going to take a run over to Lowe's tomorrow and see if they've got one in stock. And it says four to five days, if not, so I can get that and uh, get my food into a refrigerator so that I don't lose my food. All right, everybody, I'm going to cut this one off so I can start making us some dinner. Tonight is uh, our garlic chicken on the barbecue with uh, carrots and peas for a vegetable. And I made some uh, Mexican salsa and I got some tortilla chips for uh, an appetizer. It's going to go on the table while I'm cooking. And uh, we'll enjoy that, I think. I'll show you how I make my Mexican salsa in one of these videos, too. Once I get into the cooking uh, phase of uh, homesteading, I'll show you a lot of my recipes. And uh, you're going to love them. And I remember I promised you one of these days I'm going to show you a pizza quesadilla. I might do that while uh, Pierre is here. Because I'm sure he'd like to have a lunch of a pizza quesadilla. And uh, he might like that. And I also do a Portuguese linguiça sandwich with... Uh, a linguiça and cheese on a nice big French roll. Just really delicious. All right. That's all there is to it. G-Bear, remind you, don't forget, give me a thumbs up down there. Don't forget to subscribe. And don't forget to share. G-Bear, signing off.